So let's talk about timers. Timers are pretty cool things. They're just relays that just are a little slow. Yeah, they delay. There are actually two kinds of timers. There's an on delay and an off delay. We're going to focus on on delay right now and then we'll get into off delay. And there are kind of four different contacts actually we can use for timers. So essentially, just like a relay has normally open and normally closed contacts, timers also have normally open and normally closed contacts, but they're different for on delay and off delay. But it's okay, we're just going to focus on on delay right now and we're going to walk through the basic operation of a timer. Again, it's very much like a relay, so we draw it like a relay. So I just have an example here where I have a normally open push button and I'm going to press that and then the timer, that's actually the timer coil. Now the timer coil, the contacts in there actually are delayed. So it's pretty much just like, I could actually run a light, it's just like a relay. L1, let's go for there. And actually, I'm going to put a contact in here. And it's important that you don't draw the contacts like normal relay contacts. You have to draw them specifically like a timer contact. And there are four. Right now, we're going to focus on two of them. One is a normally open contact. So we're going to draw two little guys here. And then we're going to draw that. Now, this is an on delay. So the on delay has a little arrow going this way. And this is a normally open timed closed contact. It's a normally open contact because it looks like it's open and it's time to close because after the timer stops counting, then it will become closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my timer with time. So let's just say this is a three second timer. Okay, good. So now we have a three second timer because I've labeled it. I have my contacts here. Because it's for timer one, I have to label the contact itself. So that's T1-1. So. If I were to press this button and hold it down for four seconds, on the third second, after three seconds, right on three seconds, this will become closed. So as soon as I press this, nothing happens there. It just sits there and just nothing happens. But after three seconds, if I'm still holding it, that will, that will then tell this thing to become closed. And as long as I'm still holding my finger down for that extra second, it will remain closed. When I pick up my finger, this thing de-energizes, and this contact goes to its normal state. So if I wanted to reverse the logic, let's actually put a normally closed contact in here and take a look at it. So the normally closed contact is drawn like this. I'm going to draw this over here, and again, because it's a time on, it's an on delay timer, I'm drawing this arrow going this way. So now, again, start again, you're not touching anything. That is closed because it's in its normal state. Plus, I have to actually redraw what I've written it. So this is a normally closed timed open contact. It's a normally closed timed open contact. So what's going to happen is that as soon as I press it down, I'm holding it. It'll wait three seconds. During that counting time, nothing happens to this. It stays in its normal state. Okay, good. After three seconds, it goes into its active state and it becomes open. All right. So as long as I'm still holding my finger, it will be open and it will stay open. As soon as I remove my finger, that becomes open, that de-energizes, that goes to its normal state. Cool. So that's essentially how we use on-delay timers. Now, I'm going to get into off-delay timers, so let's just bear with me here. So the contacts are a little different. You have to think about off-delay timer in that what happens is as soon as we energize the timer, then the contacts change their state. And then after a counting time, then what's going to happen is that they will then go back to their normal state. Yeah, a little confusing, but let's just walk through it. So start with a normally open contact. Yeah, on delay timers and off delay timers have normally open contacts and normally closed contacts. They look exactly the same except the arrows the other way around. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We'll start with a normally open contact. There we go. So this is an off delay. So the arrow goes like that. What's going to happen here is that this is actually a normally open, timed open contact. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. It's a timed open contact, but just bear with me here. Okay, so what's going to happen is that I'm going to press this button. As soon as I press that button, and I'm going to be holding it, as soon as I press that button, this thing is going to change its state immediately. It will become closed. Okay, bam comes close. Now I'm holding my button. As I'm holding my button, when it gets to three, after three, it will actually become open. Yeah. Normally open, timed open. That's why it says open. So it will go into its active state immediately as soon as I press the button. And then after that set time, it will then go back to its normal state. Now, a normally closed 
is really no different. Except it's just drawn a little differently. And just wrap your head around this. Hold on a second. So I'll whoa, did, did, did that wrong. And I'm going to rename this. This is a normally closed time. And what does it do after the time? It becomes closed. Because as soon as I press play here, this is going to go into its active state and it will open. Okay. After three seconds, it will go back to its normal state, which is closed. So it's a normally closed contact. And after the timing, it will become closed because during the timing, it's open. Good. So those are the kind of four contacts that you can have for a timer. There are two kinds of timers. One is an on delay, one's an off delay. Right now, all you really have to do is worry about the on delay. We'll use off delays later on. Just focus on on delay right now. And on delay is either normally open or normally closed. Good. So, of course, if I didn't want to hold this button, I would put a holding circuit here. I'm going to sneak one in here, kind of a little dirty. That's going to be my R1-1, and but then I need to put a relay in here. Okay, so actually, you know what? I'm just going to put a relay in here. I'm going to like sneak it in here. I'm going to call it R1. There we go. A tiny little relay, but essentially what's going on now is that when I press this button, that's going to energize and that's going to energize. I've got a holding circuit. I'm holding the signal from the start button and I can release it. And now this is going to go through its cycle. So as soon as I press that button, this is actually going to be opened. It will open up right away. And then after three seconds, it will become closed and the, the light will go off and then back on again. Now, um, there's a problem here because I'm going to put a termination contact in here. So I could then put a termination contact here. I could put a stop. Or I can actually put another timer in here or maybe use one of the contacts from the timer to do this. Although if I did it with an if I did it with an off timer, it wouldn't work. If this was an on timer, it would. So let's actually do that. Let's make this guy a little bit different. I'm gonna make this a I'm gonna make it a normally open, timed, closed contact. And again, I'm gonna label that R1 dash. One, make sure you label your contacts always. So every time that contact, you draw one, you have to label it. I think maybe I didn't label it before. Okay, so let's continue. Right here, I'm gonna get rid of my stop and I'm gonna have this thing kind of reset itself. Watch this, this is really cool. I'm gonna put a normally closed, I'm gonna put a normally closed timed open contact here. So now I'm gonna label that, that's T1-2. Now, let's watch this. Again, I'm not touching anything. What's happening? Well, nothing. Because I haven't pressed this. That's not energized. That's not energized. That's actually remaining open. My light's off. That's closed. So if I do press this, current can get through. Okay, let's press that button. When I press this button momentarily, that's going to start counting. That's going to energize. That's going to become closed. That's going to hold this signal so that I can release my finger. My holding circuit works. Now, after three seconds, this is going to become closed. All right, that's fine. So the light is going to come on. But the problem is, actually, this is not going to work because that itself is going to also open as soon as the three seconds is up. So this isn't going to work. So if I wanted to kind of reset itself, maybe I'm going to have it so that it resets itself after the light comes on for maybe five seconds. So I'd actually want to put another timer here, T2, and I would probably then put T2, 2-1 there. Now, let's see what's going on here. Let me rewrite this so we can actually read this. 1-1. Again, back up. Don't do anything. What's happening if you don't touch anything, okay? That's open, that's not on, that's not energized, that's not energized because that's open because it's a normally open contact. And this guy has not come on yet because that's open. All right, now I press the button. That energizes, that energizes. When I release the button, it's okay because my holding circuit's covering it, that's fine. This remains closed because this guy, after let's say 10 seconds, is now starting to count after three seconds. Get this. After three seconds, after I press this button, three seconds later, this will go into its active state and become closed because it's normally open contact. Once that happens, my light comes on and this timer starts to count. 
Now, there's no reason for this thing to become open. It's just closed. It stays closed because that thing is still energized. So after 10 seconds, so actually from the very beginning, after 13 seconds from when I press the button, but after 10 seconds, after the three seconds, this will become active and then this will go into its active state, which is to be open because it's normally closed. So this normally closed contact associated with this timer becomes open, then what happens? Well, then the whole thing just shuts down. Yeah, check it out. So this guy is gonna lose power. That's gonna lose power, that's gonna lose power because I'm not pressing the button then this thing is going to go into its normal state because the timer's off. So therefore that thing's going to de-energize. That thing's going to go into its normal state and it's going to close. Now, as long as I don't have my finger on the button, nothing's going to happen. So I think that's good. Let's actually get a little bit more complicated. But for now, that is how a on delay timer works. And putting two of them together allows us to kind of shut the cycle down after more time. Okay.